Hello, I'm Jason Clouser. I'm with Banjo's tech department, and today I want to talk to you about our MFM series flow meters. I'm going to use the MFM 220 as our prop, but everything we talk about will relate to the one inch and three inch as well. This is an electromagnetic flow meter, which means your liquid must be conductive. How it works is it shoots an electrical current from one probe to the other. So this means your conductivity rating of your liquid has to be greater than 20 microsiemens. If you don't know what your conductivity rating is, you, there's always an 800 number on the MSDS sheet that comes with the product. Give them a call, tell them what you're looking for, and they'll be able to give that to you. One thing it will not read is petroleum, because petroleum is not conductive. The biggest advantage of the electromagnetic flow meters is you never have to calibrate them. Right out of the box, turn them on, they're ready to go. A gallon's a gallon no matter how much it weighs. So if you got a gallon of water at eight pounds and this other chemical at 30 pounds, it doesn't matter. This little brain in this thing knows what this dimension is. It knows how much it can get through there and it just does a calculation. So as long as your chemical's conductive, you're good to go. The meters have photo eyes. They don't have buttons. All you need to do is put your finger over the photo eye for two to four seconds and it turns on. Okay, now I'm gonna go over the tips for plumbing up your new meter. You need a minimum of 10 times the diameter of the opening coming in and going out of the meter. What this does, it gives you a nice calm flow of liquid going in and coming out. The liquid needs to be very calm. It can't have a lot of turbulence, can't have a lot of air in it. You don't want to put any elbows or restrictions near it because it creates a twirling effect or a turbulence as it's going through. So it'll be reading and then it'll get a big pocket of air and then it'll get another reading and after a while it'll lock this thing up just, just like a computer when you turn it on and off. So that's, you always need to make sure you have calm flow going through it. Another thing that helps with the accuracy of the meter is to rotate it at a 45 onto these cutouts on the feet, set it down, and it puts two of the probes low in the flow of liquid. You have to have at least two probes in the liquid at all time, plus it gives you a chance to get that air to rise up and stay out of the flow of the liquid. Another thing you need to make sure happens is it has to flow this way. This meter somehow knows that even with no moving parts inside of it, that if the liquid's going opposite direction, it will not give you a reading at all. So there is a flow director on here. Just make sure your flow is going through there and it, you should be fine. When you're using hose, use a smooth bore hose. Some guys use those ribbed hose and it creates a lot of bubbles. You know, when the liquid's rippling across there, if you get enough of those bubbles lined up, then you can't get your electrical current shot through there and it'll give you inaccurate readings. You also need to make sure that you have enough flow going to the meter. The MFM 100, the one inch, needs at least two gallons a minute going through it at all time, up to 110 gallons a minute. The MFM 220, minimum six gallons a minute, 300 gallons max. Then on the three inch, the MFM 300, 14 is minimum, 670 gallons per minute's maximum. Something else to check, after you get it plumbed in, over time, your clamps can start to adjust, start to settle. Go back, tighten those up, because just, sometimes just a little bit of air can suck in on where those clamps are at. So just after a day or two, go back, snug those up, and you should be fine. If you get that air in the system, excessive air in the system is when you see that EP that's on here when you fire it up. EP just stands for empty pipe. It's the first thing you see when you turn it on, and if you have flow going through it and it says EP, you know you've got too much turbulence, too much air in your line. Now I'm going to go over a couple of maintenance tips. If you ever have issues with the meter, the first thing you want to do is take the six AA batteries out, leave them out for 10 to 15 minutes, and then put a fresh set in. Leaving them out that long is kind of like doing a reset on your computer. It just you know, resets everything. Periodically, take a damp cloth and just wipe down these photo eyes because sometimes just the grease off of your fingers can get a buildup on there and cause sensitivity issues. And if you, about once, twice a year, take a small piece of emery cloth and get inside here and just polish up those probes. Sometimes there's a buildup on there or a thin coating and just doing that will, will help out tremendously. At the end of the season, 
Just take those six AA batteries completely out so there's no chance of them leaking and just put a fresh set in at the end of the or beginning of your next season and the thing should last you the entire season. That wraps up our talk on MFM meters. Thanks for watching.